Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to the 150th episode of Bio Buzz Weekly. Wow. Oh. 150. Heck yeah. Cue the That's confetti. That's pretty cool, man. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. yeah. We hope you guys are doing great out there. Right? Yes. And thank you for all you do for the show. Thanks to Absolutely. our crew. Thanks to all of you for watching. And I don't know. Here's to 150 more. <laughs> hey, so we wanted to tell you about, before we get to our amazing guest, yes. about a great book written by our good friend Mark, Mark Cashman, Cashman, V.O. What a great title, V-O. right? V.O., exactly. This Tips, book tricks, is insane. Tips, tools, and techniques to start and sustain your voiceover career. So you can go to CashmanCommercials.com. Reach out to Mark, get the book. It's it's a good read. Absolutely. In fact, you know, we don't really endorse a lot of stuff because we have to go through it and make sure that it's uh, Legit. approved for you guys. <laughs> um, and I got to tell you, man, this thing rocks. And if you yeah. forgot what Mark looks like, he looks like that. Yeah. All right. And go to our archives and watch his episodes. Absolutely. It's a wealth of information. But I'm telling you right now, I've always tell, I refer Mark all the time, I always tell people he's such a wealth of information because mm. you think that you're going to get one thing and you get like five million other things yeah. and that's what he put in this book. It's like everything that he could possibly know that you would need to know. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's cool. It's really, really, really great. Um, and you know what else is great? Where, where did they get that? Cashmancommercials.com. That's what I thought you said. Yeah. What else is really great <laughs> is our guest, Jennifer Hale. Yes. I call her the goddess of games. And she is, man, <laughs> because she has voiced more video games than just yeah. about anybody on the planet. And she is here today, mm -hmm. and you guys are going to love it. Here we go. Guys, our guest is an award-winning actor you hear in promos and commercials, on animated shows like Grim and Evil and the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, yeah, and she's done, like, over 160, count them, video games. <laughs> like Mass Effect, Metal Gear, Bioshock, Halo, blah, blah, blah. We are so <laughs> excited to get our 150th buzz with the lovely and flat-out amazing Jennifer Hale. Oh my gosh. Hello, everybody. I think that deserves a round of applause. To you guys for having me here. This wow. is awesome. Yay. Wow. Jennifer I'm Hale so is here. so excited. Let's change the world. Holy <laughs> The viewers around the world are like, because hey. you have been a, where is Jen? Where is Jen? You have been one of our most requested guests. Very I'm true. so Thank glad we you. finally got it to work out. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. You're so busy. And God, is she stunning? Oh, you're Beautiful. Could you die? Could Beautiful. You die? Beautiful. Right Love back your at necklace. you. Love the outfit. Oh, Thank you. Can't even see her lavalier, Mike. Can you pick it up? <laughs> Probably not. I'm not telling. <laughs> um, very, very cool. Well, me, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I mean, with all those freaking video games. Yeah, she did, she did uh, them all you, today. How do you have time to live? <laughs> oh, I have a... Uh, that's, we'll I talk seem, about that. Yeah, that's why I'm not good at playing them, because I feel like I need to go have a life so I can bring yes. it in when I do them. So, oh, so you've never played a video game. I was forced to play once. Actually, no, I played once... And I was horrible, and it was like 10 minutes, I was like, I'm done. And then, because I wanted to go outside. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. I was made to play by the phenomenal writer and human being, oh, Tom Bissell. He's amazing. And he did a piece on me for The New Yorker, and for that piece, I had to play Mass Effect. Wow. And all Ooh. I wanted to do was go back and make my performance better. I was like, oh, if I'd have known that, I wanted... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I do it again? Cause... Good, and they're like, no, yeah, yeah, you yeah. were just great. That's just um, gonna be there forever. Oh god! Fantastic. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna dive right in. We got a bunch of cool <laughs> questions for you. Um, we you, think. We think. Um, <laughs> you started out. <laughs> you started out as a, as a singer and went to school for theater. Yeah. Right. Yes, my gosh. So homework. give us a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about the whole singing and theater and all that and how that helped you climb your way into voiceover. Oh my gosh, you have done some homework here. Yes. Good lord. Um, I went to a fine arts high school called the Alabama School of Fine Arts because I would never have survived a regular high school. Mm -hmm. I was I was a nerd who wasn't even a like nerd in a way that was cool. I had one friend, that was my dog. I read a lot and I went into the woods to build little forts by myself. <laughs> that was my childhood. Hey, that's my kind of nerd. You're right, and I, I was quite happy that, well, no, not quite happy, but I survived <laughs> that way. So the fine arts high school was a lifesaver. Mm. I memorized my monologue at like one in the morning. Um, my mom was hanging out with some friends at a uh, club somewhere I think she, yeah just one of those things yeah and um, parents do that. Uh, you know she works hard she was allowed um, so I memorized my monologue in the car one in the morning did my audition for the fine arts high school and got in by the skin of my teeth which ironically that was the monologue that I did was from the skin of our teeth <laughs> oh wow and uh, yeah and in 10th uh, grade and I wasn't I don't think I was a standout at school I mean I was so busy just just trying to survive a very difficult beginning that mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even know how I came across. I have no idea. Um, 
But uh, in 10th grade, I remember going to someone's house and singing for the first time, like grabbing the mic and singing a rock and roll song. And I was like, oh, I found my soul. And I always wanted to sing, but I was always too terrified to open my mouth. Mm. I was an incredibly shy kid. Was, I rem- I was this karaoke or No, this is a, a band. This is a band they were rehearsing. I and I was like, I know that song and I know I can do it. And I did. I was like, oh my gosh, what just came out of my mouth? <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Um, but I remember one time before that, two years earlier in seventh grade, or three years earlier, I was in junior high and they were talking about advertising and memorable old slogans. Mm-hmm. And there was this one guy, Juan Valdez, who sold yeah, coffee. The coffee yeah. the and they were like, yeah. does anybody know the phrase? And I was like waiting. I was like, someone say it. I know it. I know it. And just out of my mouth involuntarily, because I would never have opened my mouth, I said, East Mountain Grown. <laughs> and the whole class laughed and everybody looked at me and I was like, <gasps> I was like, no. <laughs> and I felt that same way when I grabbed the mic that yeah. time. And I was like, oh, only I didn't want to go. I didn't want to leave. So I started singing in clubs when I was like 15. It was totally what, what illegal. Song was it? Awesome. it was an old heart song. Oh. I love heart, girl. Magic, That's my magic territory. Man. Right we there. know our territory. heart. All right, it was Magic okay. Man. Okay, Magic oh, Man. Right. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Good taste. Try to understand. Right? Try to understand. Get yeah, down. Great. Jennifer Hale rocks on <laughs> VO Buzz Weekly. We used to cover <laughs> Zeppelin. We'd cover missing persons. We covered this crazy, awesome. wide, you know, everything garbage to Zepp to the whole spectrum, you know. Beautiful. Um, yeah. And, um, but, uh, so I did that, and that was really my heart and soul. And I liked the acting school, it was fun, but. I tried out for um, a scholarship for college, basically because you know, we didn't have the cash to really you know, foot a, a really great college. And yeah. so, but I thought, well, there's a scholarship. My mom's like, you're trying out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I memorized this monologue. And I, I had probably, it was my first transcendent moment acting, auditioning for that scholarship. It was from Agamemnon, and I was Clytemnestra, the, the matriarch of the family, you know. A light piece. Right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know me. Um, and, I, and it was just one of those, you know, no, you freaking don't kind of monologues. Yeah. I am done with this. And I remember I had this moment where I was, I was doing, you know, at that age, you're like, you know, for me, I was like, I planned this, and I'm going to do this. And, I'm, you know, you sort of lay out how it's going to go. And I had that moment when the thing just took over and started driving, and mm. I was like, what? Wow, this is awesome. I didn't know what was going to come out of my mouth, and it was just like, out of my way, here I come. And it was just amazing. Hold on, I just saw that my phone is good volumes off okay we're gonna um, leave that in by the way <laughs> i just i was like <laughs> my phone, phone she's just on. going with no, it just going Hale, with i just checking didn't. her phone during an interview <laughs> no because i wanted to make sure i turned the volume off and i wasn't exactly. rude and okay then that's we're excuse your excuse yes. we're still leaving show. it in we're you still can leave it in excuse. i was like i don't want to interrupt that's rude. this is real life it's yes. real this life is, this is gorilla style we're being real here <laughs> that's for real i hate that phrase i'm being real yeah she's really even stop doing that um so piggyback on no worries oh Actually, that gets said in our house a lot. I'm it married does. to a Kiwi. Okay. So that's normal for him. Well, that's yeah. normal. That's, All right, yeah, we'll it's organic give him that. for him. Okay. All I right. caught that the honest way. Wait, that <laughs> sounded wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, I started, uh, where was I? So you were so, transcended by the monologue. Yeah, so I got that, and I got the scholarship. They gave mm-hmm. me the biggest scholarship, and it was great. But I, I was like, this is not my movie. This whole, like, stage thing is just, it's not my scene. It's not mm. my movie. It does not feel like home to me. I can't handle it. And I just was much more into singing in clubs and stuff and um, got a job at a video production house in Birmingham next door to an audio studio. And because I'd gone to the fine arts high school, I could talk without a southern accent and I could, you know, and so they called me next door to do a commercial and I was like, oh my God, they paid me $30 for that? That's crazy. I want more, you know? Because I've always had this um, connection to business and money like it's freedom Mm -hmm. it's freedom it's security it's a base to create from you know i don't think money's a bad thing i think the way what you it's like saying you know this cup is bad yes if i take it and fling it at your head it's very bad yeah but if if i use it to poison in it yeah really bad if i use it to nourish myself and others then it's a good thing uh well speaking of which yes Mm. hydrate we're fans of mm-hmm. hydrate. Oh my God, can I just show you how amazing these are? <laughs> I love these freaking things. Crocodile skin, baby. With yeah. metal studs With on metal the side. Studs. There's only one way. They're Faux crocodile. F- yes. Faux. Faux. We call that fa- no, no we're not, crocodile never mind. is harmed. That's not going well. Yes, um, I know what you're going to say. 
It is the internet. <laughs> we have, mm. we uh, have some more. But room. this will be around after the apocalypse, and I am a mom. <laughs> That's true. Um, you are a responsible. I have mother. a child. You um, are nutty. <laughs> you really are. I'm a little are. cray cray. You're I get paid cray -cray. to be cray cray. Cray cray. Um, so anyway, I rabidly pursued the um, reigning VO guys and producers at that studio, Batwell Studios, and they were Greg and Courtney. And they were kind enough to teach me the ropes. And I remember going back every couple months and going, I hate my demo. I'm so much, I can do it a lot better now. Yeah. Every two months, literally. Because the learning curve in the beginning is like this. Yes. Yes. And I tell people, I say, do not make, do not pay for a demo for the first six months to a year. Oh, yeah. Until you least. listen to it and you go, yeah, I don't know how much I could beat that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because you're going to listen every couple months. You're going to be like, and you're just going to be throwing your money down the toilet, which is yeah. what I did the first few times. But... Mm -hmm. You know, I, I worked hard so, you know, I could pay for it because I was busting my butt. But, um, yeah, and then I went over to Atlanta to sort of expand my horizons. I grew that into a full-time business. I, I literally had a schedule where I would I put on a little suit. I was still in my teens, and I put on a little suit and put my hair up in a little bun when I had lots of hair, which only went away six months ago. And... Um, I would cold call ad agencies, and I would say, hi, can I bring you my demo, and can I show you? And it was terrifying, mm -hmm. and I did it. I sort of made myself do it. Because wow. I saw the potential. I was like, this can be something. Mm -hmm. And um, Today once, you would get arrested. I, <laughs> Today you would not get Or I'd make security. a gazillion dollars. I'd be an internet yeah. star. What is um, exactly? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so I went over to Atlanta. I kind of topped out that market in Birmingham. I went over to Atlanta, started commuting back and forth to Atlanta, and my first film audition, I, did, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll, whatever. If you'll, yeah, if you'll pay me, I'll show up. I was, I'll, I'll, yeah, I can act. I'll do that, I think. And I booked it. It was a movie of the week, and which was supposed to be a pilot for a TV, but it, it, it just became a movie of the week. And, mm -hmm. and it was awesome. Once I got on that set, I was like, that makes sense to me. This acting is my zone. That's what I like. This is real acting, yeah. that you thought. You know, this is my kind. I mean, there's I have so many wonderful friends who are brilliant at theater, and, mm -hmm. and they're incredible and moving, and it works for them. For me, I'm like, I'm just being really loud because they told me to. It doesn't feel organic at all. You know, it's, just, it's not my scene, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But I have so much respect for people whose it is. You know, yeah. like Oliver Vacare, he was my... Um, brother in uh, Bioshock. He's Robert Lutes and mm -hmm. a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, he, he has great New York theater background and all that. He's amazing. And um, people like that. But uh, so anyway, and then that led me to come out to L.A. to crack the theatrical nut. The You know, I did a few movies and TV things way yeah. back. And I was in one, just one of Sandra Bullock's early movies. And that was fun. What movie and, was that? Uh, Love Potion number nine. Oh, oh wow. I think I was literally like yeah. Caddy Woman number two or whatever they Caddy called woman. me. Yeah, you know, I love those little things. Like, <laughs> I know. <you're> like, <laughs> like, hey, it Fe pays the bills. It sure Fe does. You laugh. Number four. You <laughs> laugh, but I worked. I think Absolutely. One of the best things that happened to me back then was I. I, I don't watch soap operas. I never did, but there was one that I, I absolutely watched, mm -hmm. Santa Barbara. It was on a long time ago, but the acting was freaking amazing. And, and didn't you get to work on that? Yeah. They had a contest. They had like an American Idol style contest before it was American Idol. And, and this is back when, I'm sorry, but I dressed in giant t-shirts and huge baggy pants. It was just so, <laughs> with the big frizzier, it was not attractive. Nice. I just didn't know how to work my thing. You didn't thing. wear like hammer pants, did you? They were flowered. MC hammer pants. She was oh. wearing neon on lipstick. I, were, I said, I'm bringing the 80s back today. They, right? I, so. did, I was wearing chapstick, which unfortunately I'm still oh, okay. guilty of. That's all I use. <laughs> but, um, so they had this contest and there were some beautiful women at this thing. I was like, I don't have a chance, but I'm going to do it. And I read this crazy book about brain function. This is how much of a nerd I actually am. And I learned that the subconscious mind is like a computer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know the difference between positive and negative information. Okay. So if you say, like for example, if you are a smoker, to use the example he used, and you want to not smoke anymore, even as you're lighting up, you say, I am not a smoker, I no longer smoke, you know, I, I don't do this anymore, I am healthy, blah, blah, blah. After a while, your unconscious is going, what am I doing? I don't smoke. Right. So I was like, okay. So I followed his directions and I wrote out a script about <laughs> confidence because I had none. And I was like, I believe in myself. I can do this. I see myself doing this. And, you know, and I literally for a month, I did. I followed the instructions. And I went to that thing mm -hmm. and I took risks I never would have taken. I like, made the producer take my reel. I said, I'm just going to give it to someone on the street if you don't take it. 
It's like, who is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right and I on. followed the instructions, and out of 6,000 girls they saw around the country, they wrote a part for me. And Fantastic. I was on the show for a week, and it was amazing, and I was interviewed in soap opera digest yeah. and the whole thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced it was just talent at all. I, honest to God, think it was just... It, 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 I don't, it, it works in sports. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it work in acting and mm -hmm. every single other part of your life? Yeah. See it and execute Absolutely. it. Like when I'm, Absolutely. Well, man. in soap opera work, gets a bad rap, but I mean, those actors do tens of 20, they do 50 30, pages 50 a day. pages a day. Exactly. It's ridiculous. It's no joke. I was so. like, you're one and done. It's a lot like video games. Exactly. Yeah. You don't get one take takes. and that's it. And you're like, mm -hmm. but I. Sorry, princess, we're done. Yeah. You know, yeah. you are the tiny part of the picture. Slap her hard and we're moving on. <laughs> exactly. Did you get to slap anyone, Jen? <laughs> no. Darn I, it. This little guy I kissed, I was like, I'll oh, see you soon. Oh. Very sweet, very innocent, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. It, 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 I know, but isn't that funny about confidence, man? That it's like, Incredible. if you don't have it, no. and then you, because I was like you, yeah. I, I was really shy when I was young yeah, yeah. and had zero confidence. Yeah. And now I'm, I don't know why, but I'm really confident. Because you're amazing. Because uh, I'm amazing. <laughs> Yeah. She said it. Jennifer Hill said Chuck Man is amazing, so I well, am. Okay, I guess, um, you know, you'll believe no, from Jennifer. But, but now, but now, it's like you, you think about, like, back then, like, what was I afraid of? Oh, What's I the know. worst that could have happened? We all have a, we all yeah. have a path we walked, and yeah. I don't know about you, but I had a really difficult beginning. I mean, yeah. mm. who's, uh, I may be misquoting this terribly, and someone please email me and correct me if I am, but uh, as I understand it, the Buddhists, I think, say that you choose the family you're born into for what you can learn. Mm -hmm. You know, and I picked the high challenge plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything in my life. I mean, I have hit, you know, most of the bumps that you yeah. can hit. It's funny because I'm, I'm white and I look like I've come from a nice upper middle class background. But, you know, I had the crap kicked out of me for most of my childhood wow. in various ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes literally, sometimes. <laughs> I remember standing on the playground as a fourth, fifth grade, fourth grade reading a book because everyone else is playing and I'm at recess and I'm that's like that's why little... they kick your butt because yeah. oh, yeah. you're reading a book I'm no. reading a book you know and that's what I lived I lived yeah. in books I was safe in there and uh, not really I'm sitting <laughs> on the playground and these two kids are out there throwing a football back and forth and I'm sitting there and one, all of a sudden this football comes mm. sailing at me and just bang I mean the kid had a great arm right on the bridge of my nose and I just remember blood just you know and I wow. have remember the poor custodian out there scrubbing hours later trying to get my blood oh off the thing gosh. and I was like you know and that was just that but that's the path I picked mm -hmm. and I I would not exchange it because yes I feel sadness I feel this I don't feel any resentment mm -hmm. because they have their path mm -hmm. everybody's yeah. gonna pay somewhere well, Absolutely. and you're such early. a gentle, kind soul, so I think it's Just interesting that you didn't allow me. it to kick out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're so sweet. No, I had Just, my years of but anger, a lot of too. People, yeah, well, of course, but a lot of people let that fuel the bitterness and the, through their whole life, and they're yeah. kind of always a victim of it. You know, yeah. I had someone show me somewhere that it, it became very clear to me that the energy that I'm putting out has an impact on people. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm walking around with a chip on my shoulder, I'm basically you know, stinking up the space. Yeah. It's true. We don't do that. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have to say, I mean, I love doing, I'm the Nancy Drew. My code name's Nancy Drew. Because I love researching and I oh, love, geez. And it was such no, a I'm pleasure. No, I'm <laughs> No, good stuff. Yeah, no TNZ. No. But I, it's such a pleasure to, I mean, you, you're you such a, just a versatile, I mean, your talent, la, la, la. But I mean, just you as a human being, it was such an honor. So thank you for being you. I'm glad. My, my glad pleasure. You're here. Um, yeah. But let's go to those little game notes, because our your fans are not going to forgive us if we don't talk oh, about okay, that. okay, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so seriously, you've done literally like 164, I think, games. Really? Yeah, true that what story. That would have to <laughs> Really? Yeah. I, I don't right. keep track. I don't, yeah. All I know is Steve Bloom's still way ahead of me, and yeah. I surrender. I, I bow. Steve Bloom, Steve's yeah, amazing. Steve Bloom rocks hard, but I call you the goddess of games. That's I what I call you. I love that. I'll take yeah. it. So she we're going to so. get shirts made. But <laughs> how do, okay, so over 160 games. I think it's about 164 and counting. You probably mm -hmm. did seven today. <laughs> how but do I you, couldn't tell you if I had. <laughs> it's true. The NDA. <laughs> the life of NDA. The non-disclosure. <laughs> how do you stay fresh, creative, when you're creating mm. characters and even in the recording process because those are grueling for yeah, our session. So yeah. how do you keep that mojo going year after game after game? Uh, surrender. I surrender mm. to the process and I remember that it is not at all about me and if, if I feel tired, suck it up buttercup. They're paying me to be there and, and that's really not even what it's about. There's a writer on the other end of that who who channeled or wrote or sweated out this story yeah. mm -hmm. and they have a vision and a dream writers make the world go round everybody out there who's a writer i bow to mm -hmm. you you are amazing 
Without writers, we have nothing. And I love the notion that I can breathe life into this writer's characters. And every character is different. Even when people call me in to do, make it like that one. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, no, um, because this is different. And I'm, I don't need to tell you why, but you will know why when I'm done. Mm -hmm. It's just a little different. And it, that deserves to be honored. Everyone out there, it's a new project for them, and it's their passion, and I can't short that. Yeah. 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 Really nice. Yeah. Love it. Did you no. practice that? No. <laughs> because that was really freaking good. I don't think anybody's Jennifer's ever said name. anything so yeah, it's, right. It's so eloquent. <laughs> but you're, so you're, I mean, seriously, you can just feel this tsunami of gratitude that comes off of you. Oh, and, and thank you. And that's why... Now I'm yeah. all choked up. Word on the street is you're very lovely to work with. Oh, just... yay. That's good. I'm much better than the opposite. Um, <laughs> the other right? word on the street is that you steal everybody else's parts because nobody else can get any video game work because you're around. How does that make you feel, Jen? No. There's... And actually, you know what's so interesting is I don't believe in competition. Mm. Well, that's why you don't no. have to. No, I don't. No, it's because there isn't any. It's kiwis and tangelos. You're making a fruit salad. Which one's yeah. better? I don't know. It depends on what else is in the salad. Mm -hmm. Like, I have had auditions where I was like, oh, my God, I left it all in the room. That was amazing. And they don't hire me. Mm -hmm. You know, they go yeah. with someone else. And I'm like, and when I find out who, I'm like, oh, of course they did. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And there's room for everybody. I truly believe that. The 21st century and beyond belongs to cooperation. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone last night, and he said, I can't get you for this. And I said, you know, you need to call. Uh, there's a newer girl, Sarah El Male, or, you know, Aaron Fitzgerald, or some of these incredibly, wonderfully talented women out there. I'm like, call them. They're incredible. Yeah, you that's know? cool. We're that's all going to cool. get some stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, you said... Oh, no. Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that voice acting in games is like... Acting on steroids. It is. What do you mean by that? Dude. Um, a film or TV script, you know, it's about, about that big, right? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and it goes in order. It's so cool. Even if you're shooting, you know, your right, two shot, order, your cutaways yeah. or whatever, mm -hmm. it's still basically in order. With a game script, it could be, you know, this thick or it could, I've seen them this thick. Whoa. You know? Cut it into strips, throw it up in the air, pick a piece up off the floor, and... Make it make sense, work mm -hmm. in context, et cetera, et cetera, and do it like that, you know? Wow. Yeah. In 9.8 seconds. Right. 3.2 seconds. Two takes, three yeah. takes max, because there's mm -hmm. so much work to yeah. do, mm -hmm. you know? That's why it's acting on Like, I've done green screen. That's a piece of cake. I've done, I do on camera. That's a piece of cake, you know? That stuff is easy, because you've got other human beings. Mm -hmm. Like, if you weren't here... I spend most of my time in the booth imagining what the other person is doing, saying, you know, creating for mm -hmm. me and what the environment's creating. Right. And so what comes out of me is just what would organically come out of that, the human being that I am portraying in that situation. Yeah. My best, you know, yeah. sort of shot at it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. really good. Staying right there in that little thing that you just said. Mm -hmm. So you're, you still audition, obviously, from home. Oh, yeah. Right? I, uh, everywhere. Everywhere. I go to audition. I audition from home. Okay, so whatever. when you're auditioning from home, yeah. when you're not being directed by yeah. anybody and saying, hey, try this or try that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have a character for a new video game or whatever mm -hmm. it is, what's your process? How do you dissect it and then go for it? You know, I look at, I read it over as much as I can. I was once told a long time ago by a casting director, read it at least five times. And it's interesting because different, you know, you think you've got it after the first couple. No, you have that, but there's more understanding to come. I see. Read it five times. Um, imagine, also, I look up who's doing it because there's a general sensibility. A Tim Schafer game right. is different from a Bioware game, is different from a Ken Levine game. Mm. You know, they all have their own zone and their own feel. Like right. TV shows have different feels. Exactly. And I'm like, okay, where does this one land? So I'm in that universe and that universe communicates in this way. Who am I in that universe? What part am I serving in the story? What's the, what's the common humanity between me and this person? How do they get what they want? Okay, where are they? Who are they talking to? What's their relationship to that person? And let's try it. And then I will sometimes listen back and sometimes I won't. If my gut says leave it alone, I leave it alone. If my gut says listen back, I listen back. And then I will try to go in and do something I learned from the brilliant and amazing Gray Delisle, who I adore. She's awesome. Yeah. She's wonderful. Yeah. I yeah. Lo love you, Gray Delisle. So we love you, Gray. Gray. Oh, we love Gray. Um, which is give them something completely opposite. You know, because see what your creativity says. And mm -hmm. some days I just give them one. I'm like, no, I'm not touching that. That's what comes from me. That's my offering. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not there to get a job. I'm there to do the job. 
The audition is the job. There you go, yeah. Yes. If you're auditioning to get a job, your eye is beyond what you're doing. Mm. You should just be in there fully leaving nothing all, you know, leave it all in the room. Mm -hmm. Dump it all on the table and be satisfied you're done. You may get asked to come do that again and they'll pay you, which is great. Right. You know. Right. So yeah, that's how I do it. Fantastic. Um, yeah, that's such an important Did you mentality. practice that? Did you practice saying that? <laughs> She's been practicing that for yeah, 20 she, years. Uh, everything it's just everything you're saying is too good, <laughs> Jennifer. So it's Thank too you. good. It's organic <laughs> like our apples. Um, um, well, I had the right one, on the money. I now. had the wonderful pleasure recently Thank of being you. in a workshop with you with the incredible Jody Gottlieb and Jeff Howell. Oh, I love that. So that much was fun. That so much fun. So much fun. It was oh, such I a pleasure. I that. love watching other people work and yeah. and why do you still do them and what what's your feeling about ongoing classes and workshops? I still study because I'm not done. Mm -hmm. You know, and honestly there are very few places I can still go and learn. Mm -hmm. And Jody's one. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Elizabeth Gamza is another and uh, I I don't believe in resting on one's laurels. I think that I'm constantly evolving and I can constantly get better. Mm -hmm. And so let me go do that. Yeah. 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 Very good. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get down. And and you know I will say it takes something to put because the re one of the reasons I wouldn't is oh I, how will it look blah 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 because you know I've got all this career and I'm like okay we are not making decisions from that place and if you even have that thought guess where you're going mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're going in there it's like when I ride my horse and he's <laughs> like I don't, I don't want to go past the pipe I'm like well guess where we're spending the next half hour right here at the pipe. Yeah. You know, until you get it out of your system. Yeah. For me, that's an ego driven decision to not do something because mm -hmm. it might look a certain way. Right. You right. talk about that's the recipe for a small life. I'm not Absolutely. interested. Absolutely. And when small you life. believe your own hype, especially when you're oh, on top, God. that's like the worst time because <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, I got this. <laughs> and there's such a long way to fall. Yeah. And then you become derivative. You mm. become, you start to do yourself instead of be yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. like, really? Yeah. And people disconnect. You know, mm -hmm. people are having an authentic experience because I am. And my yes. job is to continue to learn how to do that. Fantastic. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> John, do you have any, professionally speaking, mm -hmm. do you have any do's and don'ts that you live by that maybe somebody watching could be helped? That's... Yeah, it's not about you. Mm. It's not about me. I, I mean, my, I've used this analogy several times, or I don't know if it's an analogy or a metaphor. I don't know. Sorry. Um, but I'm I'm the ink in the tip of the pen, you know, especially in games mm -hmm. when the production schedule is so long. And even in something as, as, you know, like a commercial that seems so quick. And, you know, there's a writer there who may or may not have set out in life to be a commercial writer. Maybe they want to be a novel writer or maybe they want to be in advertising right. and that's their passion. But they worked really hard. Mm -hmm. And there's a client whose business is at stake, you know. And Don LaFontaine said the most brilliant thing. Oh God, I love that man. I'm going to get all choked up. He's I know. gone too soon. Mm. Gone way, way too, too soon. soon. Yeah. But he's all still, you know, sitting back with a cigar looking at all of us going. You know he is. In the right. limo. <laughs> <laughs> in the limo. I came up with that. Yeah. And, and Don, this is, this is from you, and I'm grateful. When he was doing trailers, he said he knows that there's always, it may not be his movie that he's going to go see, whatever, but there's always one person out there for whom this is the answer. And that's the person you're talking to. It's not about you. And to go back to the pen thing, like the ink that comes out of the tip of the pen is small. There's an entire pen behind that that had mm -hmm. to be assembled by people and it has to work together. And just because I'm what you see, I'm a tiny fraction. Now, that being said, I was speaking at um, GDC, I think, last year to indie developers about using, you know, union talent versus non-union talent, season talent versus, you know, newer talent and um, I was telling them you spend a lot of time making these beautiful machines, this beautiful work of art that needs to be plugged in to run. Mm -hmm. We are the electricity that people see so don't cheap out on your plug. Mm -hmm. You know at the same time you want to have good quality ink in that thing mm -hmm. so you yeah. know value it and, and treasure it and do it well but we need to value our jobs and our work ethic more than anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, now more than Agreed. ever. Yeah. And it's not, none of it is about any of us. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, it's all, really, honestly, it's all about service. And there's a great thing, which is, I again, I attribute to the Buddhists, but I could be wrong, which is be no thing. Be nothing. Be no thing. Which, in being nothing, you can actually be everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you define yourself as, I'm a this, you're like, oh, that looks like fun. I can't do that because I'm a this. 
oh really? I'm nothing. I can do everything. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's like yeah. one of my yeah. favorite new yeah. things. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah, that well, that yeah. fearless no boundary. Absolutely. I mean, how can you fail? If yeah, you learn something, even if you allegedly fail. You've learned something in there the process. There is no fail. You yeah. fail when you choose to look good over have a good time or do the right thing, mm -hmm. or expand or put your put at risk who you are for what you can be. Mm, that's a good yeah. one. Isn't that a wow. good one? I love this is that an one. amazing yeah. episode. <laughs> I'm going to watch this over Let's and over it. and over again. <laughs> oh, Cheers. My goodness, Cheers. Oh, yeah. Theo Come Buzz Weekly. Let's drink Cheers. to that. We'll drink Cheers. to that. Oh, All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mine's a little strong. Okay. <laughs> well, that's part one with Jennifer Hale. We'll be back next week with part two, so join us. Absolutely. Keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little, little buzz. buzz.